right, welcome back to another RC Wars video. Today we've got a pretty exciting episode in store for you. We're going to be talking about Wi-Fi enabled devices in your home and we've actually got an expert in the industry. Uh, Scott with Sump Alarm is here to join us today and they actually manufacture a variety of Sump products, uh, Sump Alarm products. Just tell us in a nutshell, Scott, um, what kind of products it is that you guys specialize in. Well, Chris, we have both uh, indoor and outdoor and Wi-Fi and non-Wi-Fi product lines and alarms. They're predominantly used in septic systems, sump pumps, things of that nature. Now, I understand it that you guys actually have the only outdoor rated Wi-Fi enabled Sump Alarm system, at least that, that I'm aware of. Uh, it's the only one we're aware of at the moment too. So that's actually pretty interesting. I've, I've definitely come across a number of situations where somebody may be more interested in that or perhaps didn't buy a Wi-Fi enabled device simply because it wasn't outdoor rated for the application. Uh, that happens. We do know that that happens. And also, um, we think that there's a learning curve there with the installer base where they would like to try it and their customers are asking for it, but they might not be that comfortable mm -hmm. with it. Hmm. So anyways, what we're talking about in today's video, introductions aside, is Wi-Fi enabled devices, like I mentioned. And we're seeing a lot more Wi-Fi enabled devices coming into the market, whether it be a washer and dryer, a sump alarm, or a variety of other things that are able to report to the homeowner in most cases. I think Thermostats, Nest, um, as far as I know, those have like an app. Uh, so we're seeing a lot more of these devices out there and it kind of brings up a question to installers specifically, what kind of a, a scope of the project does the, does the installer need to handle? Because oftentimes the, the homeowner is the person that's monitoring the system. Right. Well, you know, for installers, uh, and it's a pretty common question, um, the first thing an installer's got to be able to do is to quote the project, right? And um, in order to do that, one of the key things that the installer needs to do is ensure that there is actually Wi-Fi existing where they plan on installing the alarm. And there's a number of ways that, you know, an installer can test for that. So what, what is a common method? Just ask the customer if they have Wi-Fi or is there more to it than that? Well, generally speaking, uh, if you're with the customer, one of the easiest things you can do is ask them to bring their data phone, walk out to the septic system or down to the sump pump, have them turn off their cellular data because each of these data phones has two connections to the internet, one via the cellular data and the other one via the uh, user's Wi-Fi network. Yeah, and you don't want to mix uh, those up. That's right. Yeah. So, uh, basically, you want to be sure that you have Wi-Fi at the installation location. It's fairly strong. So the easiest thing to do is take your customer with their phone, go to the septic system, disable cellular data, and see if they can search Google or do a speed test oh, okay. or get on Amazon or anything like that. Now, we talked earlier and you mentioned the, a particular app that, that you guys have tested extensively that you recommend to a lot of customers. So maybe we could share what that app is called? You bet. Um, for uh, Android users, there used to be some great Apple apps, but we don't know why they've sort of uh, evaporated. It could be due to privacy or something hmm. like that. But on the Android side, there's an app called Wi-Fi Analyzer that is absolutely fantastic. An installer can take that app, download it on their phone, and they can go out without having the user's credentials or even be on their network. And they can stand by the septic system and it will literally show them all the Wi-Fi networks in the area. And it will also show their signal strength. And when they do that, uh, there's a unit there that is used called negative decibels. And so you're gonna see the uh, Wi-Fi signal strength in negative decibels and there's a handy little chart, uh, and there's also, it's inside of Wi-Fi Analyzer that will show you what a good signal is, what a great signal is, what a fair signal is, and what a weak signal looks like. That sounds like a pretty fantastic tool. I think what we're gonna do is put a link in the description below, uh, straight to the Google Play Store. So any of you guys wanna check that app out, um, we're not affiliated with it in any way, but we found it, or Scott found it pretty useful, has done a lot of testing with it, so we're gonna link that below for you. So when it comes to installing like a new router in my house or if I'm hooking up any new device, a TV, what have you, I know usually that's kind of a, on me. Um, so when it comes to an installer or a professional putting in this types of equipment, where does he draw the line on what his portion is? 
It's a great question. Um, and we've worked with a number of installers, both in plumbing and on the septic side. And generally the way we like to say it is that there's three steps to installing a system. One is the physical installation. Step two is that whatever wireless device is installed in a home, it needs to get connected to the local wireless network. And then the third one is there's generally via an app or the website, you need to go on site on online and you have to register that device or somehow associate it with yourself, set mm -hmm. up notifications and those kind of things. So with those three steps, uh, our advice to installers is always do number one, the physical installation, hand them the manual and let the customer do the rest. Well, that makes a lot of sense because when you're looking at applications or you're trying to monitor your system, you know, you want to be comfortable with the interface is kind of what I imagine you're going for. Right. So, for example, let's say that an installer comes in and they do everything. They install the unit, they put it on the customer's Wi-Fi network, they register it for them and everything. Well, first of all, they need, you know, to create passwords for the user or have the user's uh, Wi-Fi password handy in order to do that. And that could make some comfort, some, some customers feel uncomfortable. Uh, the second part of that is then the installer walks out and the customer doesn't know what they have. They don't know how it's connected. If they change their wireless password, they don't know how to reconnect it. Mm -hmm. So uh, let them own that. Yeah. And then, uh, or hand them the manual and in our case, tell them to call us and we'll walk them through it. But that knowledge needs to be resident with the user in terms of what technology they have installed and how they can manipulate it. Well, that really makes a lot of sense. I think that uh, a homeowner being familiar with their equipment is, and I've been preaching this for a long time, uh, the biggest money saver a homeowner can have, understanding and knowing your equipment. So um, I think that that's fantastic. I know that with the popularity of these Wi-Fi devices, um, what is a person gonna do if they're interested in, in the device? Because you, you've kind of told me that there are ways to get these devices to function, even if you don't have Wi-Fi in your house. Talk yeah. a little more about that. Well, you know, uh, and that is the same question basically as uh, maybe an installer sitting out there listening to it right now is like, okay, great, so you taught me how to test Wi-Fi, but what happens if I get out to the septic system and they don't have any? Mm -hmm. uh, what if my customer wants to get alerts, but they don't have Wi-Fi at all? Uh, so we have, um, a line of wireless extenders that we have tested. So at one point we brought in like the 10 hottest selling wireless extenders off of Amazon and we tested them. Mm -hmm. uh, and generally speaking, and we found one that works in all scenarios. So it is an indoor device. Mm -hmm. uh, so in the way that it works is it plugs one end into uh, your uh, internet router or your modem, okay. whatever you have, and then you plug the other end in the wall. And then for example, let's say that the septic system is 30 feet outside of the garage and it's a long ranch home. Well, then you take the separate end and you put that in an outlet in the garage. So what that's going to do, it's going to send the wireless signal over the power line and it will broadcast another network at that end that the device can uh, then be put onto. So, and that's much great. like your disclaimer before, we don't make these devices, we don't sell these devices, we just test them and recommend them. So you have one in mind in particular, you said, um, we'll definitely get that information and we'll put a link in the description for that device for any of you folks that are dealing with these types of situations. If you either don't have Wi-Fi available at all or that signal strength is just super weak and isn't going to be able to cut the mustard, so to speak. Um, sounds like you guys have found a good solution and done a lot of testing to get there. We have, and uh, we steer people towards a specific router, or excuse me, extender, uh, because what we found kind of separates the men from the boys in terms of wireless extenders is what happens when power goes out and comes back. What happens when the internet goes down and comes back up? And some of those devices require a reset on them. Mm -hmm and others don't. Some of them will just bring up one end, right? They'll bring up the connection with the device or the connection with the router, but not both. And again, that's when you need to go do the reset on it. So uh, the customer is not gonna want that. What the customer wants is if their Wi-Fi goes down or the house is out of power, once it comes back up, everything comes right back on and starts functioning again. That makes a lot of sense. I think we probably, or at least most of us have been in those situations where you know, all of a sudden your internet goes out, so you reset the modem, 
and then all of a sudden your router won't connect. So you got to reset the router and you're just running around turning things on and off yeah. until finally everything works. So that sounds like a really good solution for that. Uh, one question I had is that device sounds pretty interesting with the fact that it uses kind of the, the line, the electrical lines to transfer and create that Wi-Fi. Uh, what's the farthest distance that you've been able to test or, or that you've accomplished? Uh as long as you are either on the same circuit or in the same breaker box, it seems to work just fine. Hmm. Um, outside of that, you know, assuming that we're talking about a residence, uh, we've used them in, you know, ranch homes that are a couple hundred feet long. So, and we've had good success with them in that, uh, in that scenario. So in the residential market, I mean, this solution basically is a, is a one, one and done. Yes, and, and, and where maybe it's not so applicable, is uh, let's say you're in a commercial facility and uh, they have multiple breaker boxes and the router that you want to connect to is on breaker box a and the outlet that you want to plug the extender into is on breaker box b mm -hmm. um, in that scenario we would say well you know we would have to go look for something else a little bit more specific for something because like it that. can't jump between those circuits that's right okay that's right you can't plug it in in phoenix and pick it up in tallahassee yeah <laughs> Well, that's great. Well, I think that we definitely covered a number of great tips that, that cover Wi-Fi enabled devices across the industry. Um, so if you're shopping for anything relating to sump alarms or sump pump alarm systems, definitely be sure to check out what we have on rcworst.com. Um, sump alarm is there standing by for technical support or give us a call as you guys know you can. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we will catch you next time.